Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering nursing care of the infant. This is going to be a multi-part series because there is a lot of information that you do need to know. So before we get started, guys, please go ahead, like this video. You know you're going to like the video. Press that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Press that red notification button so every time a new video is released, you'll be notified. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com, and you can catch me on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook, and I go over various nursing type questions. So let's get started. Remember, we're talking about the infant. So we're gonna start with um, proportional changes. Take a look. Infants gain 150 to 210 grams. That's about five to seven ounces every week until about five to six months of age. This is important. You guys have to know this part. Look, when the birth weight has at least double, what is that telling us? At six months, we expect to see their birth weight double. And then at a year, we expect to see it triple. That is a test question. You need to know that, okay? An average weight for a six-month-old child is about 7.3 kilograms, 16 pounds. Weight gain slows during the second six months. By one year of age, the infant's birth weight has tripled for an average weight of 21.5 pounds. So all of this, the most important thing you need to get out of it is by six, six months, their weight should double. And by a year, it should triple. That's on NCLEX, that's on HESI, that's on ATI, you need to know it. Closure of the cranial sutures. Oh, you can't see that, there we go. Closure of the cranial sutures occurs with posterior fontanelle, look at this, closing by six to eight weeks of age and the anterior fontanelle closing by 12 to 18 months of age. Usually they ask you about the anterior fontanelle, but I don't write your exams. They might ask you about the posterior. You need to know both. So we expect the posterior one to close by six to eight weeks, and then anterior fontanelle we expect to close by 12 to 18 months. All right. You know what? This isn't working for me. Let me switch this around. There we go. So this table, <laughs> you see, I wrote no with three exclamation marks. So many questions, uh, as far as the infant's concerned, is gonna come from this table. So you need to know this, especially the ones that I have um, underlined or I put a star next to. The ones that I underline or I put a star next to, those are the ones that tend to show up the most on uh, nursing questions in regards to the infant. All right, so let's start with one month, when the patient's one month, um, age. Look at vocalization. They cry to express displeasure. Remember, they can't talk. So if something's wrong, that's how they let you know that something's wrong, by crying. Under socialization cognition, for one month, is in the sensor motor stage. Stage one, use of reflexes. You need to know that. Let's jump to two months of age. Two months of age, the posterior font fontanelle has closed. Isn't that interesting? We're seeing this, that by um, eight weeks, which is two months, we expect that posterior fontanelle to close, but they also said that same piece of information right here. What did I tell you when you see information repeating itself? That means it's important to know. That means that you're most likely gonna see it on a test somewhere. Okay, so this is the second time that we're seeing this. By two months, eight weeks, we expect the posterior fontanelle to close. Crawling reflex disappears. For fine motor skills, the hands often open. And look at this, the grasp reflex starts to fade. It's not gone all the way, but it starts to fade. Under socialization and cognition for the two-month-old. They smile in response to various stimuli. So the the smile that, you know, it was um, just something physically um, that they were doing it was not on purpose. Now it's on purpose. They're starting to uh, smile to actual stimuli. Three months, the primitive reflexes are fading. Look at this. Look what happens with the fine motor skills. Grasp reflex absent. So at two months, it started to fade, but by three months, it should be gone. Vocalization, you should expect them to start cooing and babbling and chuckling. For socialization and cognition, 
they can recognize familiar faces and objects such as a feeding bottle. When they see that bottle, they know what that bottle is. They can recognize it. They know they're about to eat. At four months of age, drooling begins, moral, tonic neck, and rooting reflex have disappeared. They're gone. I'm going to go over those reflexes, each of them with you, and I'll go over the most important ones for you guys to know. It's not going to be this video, but it will be part of the series. But you need to know by four months, they're going to be gone. What else do we see at four months? They anticipate feeding when they see the bottle or if the mother's breastfeeding. At five months, beginning signs of tooth eruption. You see, I put a star next to it. You need to know that. Why didn't I put a star next to this one? Because you definitely need to know this. And birth weight doubles. Remember, at six months, birth weight doubles. And that at one year, it triples. What else happens? Able to grasp objects voluntarily. And guys, by the way, I know they have this under five because remember, it's by six months that that earth, that earth, by six months that the birth weight doubles by. So yes, it can double at five, but by six months, it should have doubled. I hope that makes sense. So let's keep going. At five months, they can turn over from their stomach to their back. They're able to grasp objects voluntarily. So it's no longer just a reflex. When they want something, they can grasp it. At five months, smiles at mirror image. And this is a famous NCLEX test question. You know, um, by five months, a uh, mirror is a great toy. Of course, it needs to be plastic, guys, not a, like a real glass mirror. But that's a great toy to help um, that child develop because they love the mirror, they love looking at themselves. And so they'll move to the left and move to the right. And they, it's fun for them just to be able to look at themselves in the mirror. And that's all part of learning. So that's very important for you to know. They're able to discriminate strangers from family, discover body parts, six months. Teething may begin with eruption of two lower central incisors. You need to know that. They can roll from back to abdomen. Remember, at five months, they were able to roll from their stomach to their back. Now they can roll from their back to their stomach. They begin to imitate sounds that they hear. They briefly search for dropped objects. And guys, this is known as object uh, permanence. This is the beginning when they start to understand that even though they can't see something, it's still there. That has been seen on NCLEX, has the ATI a lot, okay? So by six months, um, if they're playing with a toy and you hide that toy um, behind a couch and they go like this, when they go like this, that means they're still looking for it. So they understand, even though they can't see it, it's there. So that's the beginning of their understanding of object permanence. You absolutely need to know that. At seven months, eruption of the upper central incisors. Sensory, they can fixate on very small objects. They can focus on them. Socialization cognition for the seven month old. They show signs of fretfulness when the parent disappears. They show signs of anxiety or being worried when they don't see that parent. Place peekaboo. This is another famous test question. By seven months, they love peekaboo. You know, you'll say peekaboo and they'll go abu. They love it. At eight months, eruption of upper central incisors. They can sit steadily unsupported. They may stand holding onto furniture. They, they'll fall very easily, but around eight months, that's when we see them at least trying to stand holding onto things. Look at this. Responds with the word no. Nine months. This is eruption of the upper lateral incisor. They can pull themselves to standing position and they stand holding onto furniture. 
they have a crude pincer graph. It's not, it's not refined yet. It's very crude. Preference for use of dominant hand now evident. So by nine months, you're going to have a pretty good idea. Are they going to be left-handed? Are they going to be right-handed? Because whatever their dominant hand is, they start to prefer it. Vocalization, they comprehend. No, no. They understand. 10 months. Vocalization, they start to say dad, dad, mama, with meaning. Because before that, they would say it, but they would just say because they were repeating it. They were repeating the sounds. But now they recognize who mom is. And when they say mama, they know what they're saying. They know mama, they know dada. They're saying it with meaning. They comprehend, bye-bye. So when they see a family member about to like leave the room to go to the kitchen or go to the patio, they go bye-bye. They understand that person's leaving. They comprehend bye-bye. And what happens at 10 months, another thing about them understanding bye-bye is um, they might be playing with their toy and then they hear mommy say bye-bye to somebody and they start to cry because they understand what bye-bye means. May say one word such as hi, bye, no. They wave bye-bye. They develop object permanence. And that object permanence, it's, it's solidified by now, OK? They understand it. They play interactive games, such as patty cake. 11 months, eruption of, la eruption of lower lateral incisor may begin. They cruise or walk holding onto furniture or with both hands held. Anticipates body gestures when familiar nursery rhyme or stories being told. So you know how mom or dad will read a story every night and let's say, you know, they're always reading the three little pig. The, the, the child, the infant will stick their foot out waiting for the parent to wiggle their little toe. They expect that to happen. Okay, they play game up down so big or peekaboo shakes head for no. At 12 months, lots of things happen at 12 months, 12 months, they're one years old. By this time, the weights tripled, not doubled, tripled. Birth length is increased by 50%. The anterior fontanelle is almost closed because remember it closes around 12 to 18 months. So it starts to close. The Babinski reflex has disappeared. They walk with one hand held. They may attempt their first step alone and fi find motor skills. They attempt to build two block towers, but they fail. And this creates frustration for them. Localization. They say three to five words besides dada, mama. They understand simple commands. When I say simple commands, such as come here. And if they can't walk, what do they do? They crawl to you. Simple commands. They're fearful in strange situations. They cling to the parent. And that's why you're taught in peds with these infants when you have an examination. You know, don't try to get them on the examination table by themselves. Let them sit on the parent, the grandparent, whoever it is, lap that they're familiar with. Okay, they're, that, that brings comfort to them. They search for object, even if it has not been hidden, but searches uh, only where the object was last seen. And that's all part of the object permanence. That's very important for you guys to understand. Look at this. Maternally derived iron stores are present for the first five to six months, then gradually diminish, which also accounts for the lowered hemoglobin levels towards the end of the first six months. So from her being pregnant, she still has that iron and she'll still have it for about five to six months before it starts to gradually go away, okay? During infancy, thermoregulation becomes more efficient. What's thermoregulation? How they can keep themselves, they, have, they can regulate their own temperature, keep themselves warm. The ability of the skin to contract and of the muscles to shiver in response to cold increases. 
Shivering, that's the thermogenesis, causes the muscles and fibers to contract, generating metabolic heat that's distributed throughout the body. Increased adipose tissue during the first six months insulates the body against heat loss. What's this adipose tissue they're talking about? The fat. Binoclearity or the fixation of two ocular images into one cerebral picture, that's fusion, begins to develop by six months of age and should be well established by four months. Let's talk about motor, fine motor development. Grasping occurs during the first two, two to three months as reflex and gradually become voluntarily. At first, it's reflex. They just do it automatically. But then around three months, we start to see it, what? Them doing it voluntarily. By seven months of age, I don't know why I didn't put the star next to this one. You need to know this one too. By seven months of age, they transfer objects from one hand to another, use one hand for grasping and hold a cube in each hand simultaneously. They can start to switch off. Infants use a crude, remember I told you it's not refined, guys. Infants use a crude pincer grasp by eight to nine months of age and progress to a neat or refined pincer grasp by 10 months of age. By one year of age, infants try to build a tower of two blocks, but they fail and they get frustrated. Do you, have you guys noticed that a lot of what we just saw in the text is basically what we saw in these tables? Yeah. Why? Because a lot of those are going to be test questions for you. I really encourage you guys to, you can go to the dollar store and get the jumbo index cards. And on those jumbo index cards, do one month, two months, three months. And the most important things you have to know about each of those months, because you get lots of questions on development of the infant, what you expect to appear, what you expect to disappear. So you guys really have to know this. Gross motor development. The full-term newborn can momentarily hold the head, momentarily, not for too long, momentarily hold the head midline and parallel when the body's suspended ventrically, ventrally, and they can lift and turn the head from side to side when prone, when they're on their stomach. But this is not the case when infants are lying prone on a pillow or soft surface. We wanna stay away from pillows because we don't want them to suffocate. Infants do not have the excuse me, infants do not have the head control to lift their heads out of the depression of the object and therefore risk possible suffocation in the prone position early in infancy. That's why we do not put pillows or plush objects in the crib. We don't want them to suffocate because you put them prone on that pillow, they don't have um, that strength to lift their head. They may suffocate on that pillow or that soft object. By four to six months of age, head controls well established. Look at this nursing alert. When you guys are studying and you see nursing alerts, you see anything that is highlighted, you see anything that's italicized, you see anything that's bolded, you see any information that's repeating, which means you saw it in the text, but then you saw in a table, a diagram, a chart, whatever, you need to know this. So what are they saying? An infant who, the you guys know I can't speak. An infant who displays head lag at six months of age should have a developmental and neurological evaluation. Why? Because by four to six months, that um, head control, it should be well established. Okay? Rolling over. The ability to willfully turn from the abdomen to the back occurs at five months of age and the ability to turn from the back to the abdomen occurs at six months of age. We saw this here, and then we saw it on that table. That's important to know. It is therefore important to place infant in a supine position for sleep. And think of the phrase back to sleep. When they're going to sleep, you put them on their back. Now you can give them tummy time. It's called tummy time. You can give that to them during the day where they're on their tummy and they're awake. You're watching them. But when they're sleeping, you need to put them supine. They need to be on their back. 
While infants are awake, a prone position, that's what's known as tummy time, is acceptable to enhance achievement of milestones such as head control, crawling, creeping, and turning over. What did I write here? I wrote right here, never side or prone when they're sleeping. You never put them prone or on their side because here's the thing, if they're sleeping, they may roll from their side to their stomach and can't lift up their head. So when they're sleeping, you never put them on their side or prone. And then tummy time only while they're awake. And I put a happy face so you can know while they're awake and you have your eyes on them, you can put them on their tummy. It's actually a good thing. Sitting. The ability to sit follows progressive head control and straightening of the back. Their development starts from the top to bottom. So we see the head control, and then last we see them what? Walking. Locomotion. Crawling, that's propelling forward with the belly on the floor, progresses to creeping. Creeping is on hands and knees with belly off of the floor by nine months. At this time, they stand while holding on to furniture. By 11 months of age, they walk while holding on to furniture or with both hands held. And by one years of age, they may be able to walk with one hand held. I'm going to stop here, guys. And part two, we're going to start with psychosocial um, development, a sense of trust versus mistrust. And um, that's Erickson. So in the comments, let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know if there's anything you'd like me to go um, more in detail with or another video you'd like to see me make. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Please do not forget, guys, like this video, subscribe to my channel, press that red notification button, and you guys will see me on the next video.